let's get into it so you see the little mohawk i'm rocking so i took my hair out of my braids like a week ago when i first took it down it was like sort of cute worn in a bun did water camp hair got wet the shrinkage is real it is so shrunk i guess and so tight that even trying to pull it into a ponytail like what i've been doing in the past few days is not working excuse me it's not working so it's time to wash i was like it's the perfect day i have nothing to do today no major distractions so let's wash and i'm gonna do some mini twists but there's just nothing i can do also i don't know how to clip my ends but if i see that i think something is dead i will be clicking it clipping it i mean y'all see what i'm talking about like that has to be dead and it's just been doing that all week so let's get into it to be honest my like hair supplies line whatever is not the best because a lot of times I get my hair washed when I go and get it braided. So like, I don't have the best products, but the one, this right here, my hairdresser makes it. It's called Bees and Berry. It's amazing. With silk protein, biotin, and provitamin B5. Amazing. So a lot of the shampoos I was using before literally would like stick to my scalp. Don't know if anyone's had that happen, stick to my scalp. And I always go in with this at the end, the cleansing milk. So we're gonna do that. And then I have a leave-in conditioner. It's in my bathroom though. I'm gonna have to dig through and see which one I'm gonna use. So I really haven't found like the perfect full line that works on my hair. So that's why it's like a little scattered. But we're just gonna go with the flow and at least wash it and detangle it. This lighting's bad. So y'all, I'm doing my hair in the living room because there's a huge mirror. So, okay, Bruce gonna do my hair right here prop my computer up so I can watch a movie I can look at myself I can see I'm not too worried about the parting because it's just gonna be a lot of twists my goal is to make them really really small that's my goal so we'll see how that goes stay tuned I'm gonna get started and then I have something to share okay did the first few I definitely am going to like twist them together or something also there was no point in me blow drying because this stuff that i'm using is like water-based so that's great and then i'm just using some gel anyway it's going really well i just want to keep up the whole small twist i don't want them to be big and i want them to last for a good amount of time so small small twist it is anyway so something I was gonna chat about um I just lost my train of thought okay so a few things I want to talk about life updates house maybe a bit of a relationship talk who knows just whatever is on my heart anyway um, I've been watching a lot of TikToks lately about, like, people being really young and, like, wanting to get a house and stuff, and just, like, a lot of people moving, um, and just sort of deciding, like, okay, do I want to be in a house or do I want to be in an apartment, blah, 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 and so a lot of people are just, like, it's impossible, and for me, it is my, I'm 23 years old, and I, this is my second house, so... I just wanted to tell y'all how I did it. Now, the first house, that was not, like, impossible. I feel like the most impressive part is the house I'm in now. Because the first house I got with someone. And so it was just a matter of saving up money. And saving up money and getting the house. You know what I mean? Like, that's all that it was. When you have two incomes, it's a lot easier. When you have two people, it's just a lot easier. So that wasn't very impressive to me. What was impressive was the house I'm in right now. When I say I was so stressed and so overwhelmed just with my entire life when I got this house, like my life was just so hectic and I was so stressed. So backstory, Becca and I had lived in a, in a really nice apartment before and it was just such a blessing in disguise 
um, because the first time we applied, we didn't get it. And then the second time we applied, the rates were actually lower. It was in the middle of lockdown and we ended up getting the apartment, but we moved so quickly because the first apartment we lived in got shot through. Like quite literally a bullet came flying from the ceiling and it went through Becca's room and it went through her closet. And it was just like, it was truly a miracle. The more and more I think about it, it was a miracle because like Becca got off from Chick-fil-A and normally like she would come home, get out of her clothes and change like right in front of her closet. And this time, like I was going to tell her something and I was in the living room. And so we just like sat down in the living room and chatted, heard this huge bang. I forget where Phil was. I don't think Phil was in the room. I think Phil was in the living room with us and we didn't know what it was. And so we're like walking around like, oh my gosh, like what was that noise? And like, we're going from room to room. We look in Becca's room. There's a bullet through her door. Our apartment complex didn't care. The police didn't care. No one cared. So we like moved within a week of that happening because we did call the police and our apartment just in general was like unsafe and we didn't know if they were going to be mad that we called the police long story short we ended up ended up moving got this really nice apartment but just being in that first apartment was just like very traumatizing it was not only unsafe but it was also just like gross like it was just a horrible experience all around and so this past time when i was looking for an apartment I was scared because I was like, I don't want to be, oh, backtrack a little bit. I had gotten an apartment before I got this house. It ended up flooding the first week. I saw multiple car break-ins while I was outside walking Bruce, which meant like I wasn't safe. You know what I mean? Like I have to take him out at night. I wasn't safe. Everything flooded. It was awful. The smell was awful. I just, I didn't like it. And I chose the apartment because I really had to move out and I was just rushing and it was under a thousand dollars so i'm stressed and i'm like oh my gosh where am i gonna live like all this type of stuff i don't want a terrible apartment like blah blah, blah. so i'm looking at apartments they're either really really high or they're cheap and not nice so i was like panicky about that and i was like well let me just look into getting a house so like i text my realtor and she's like yeah like i was on the deed of the house that i was in before but not the loan so that was a major steal because if I was on the loan, I would not have been able to get the house that I'm in now. So here's the biggest problem that I ran into. Being by myself with a teacher salary, like how much you make obviously qualifies you for how much of a house you can buy. I probably, my max was like 140, which if you know, 140 is very, very low for a house. So when I first started looking like, the only areas I could find like a house for 140 or just something under 150 in general was like the East Lake area. And it would be like super cute home, just got flipped, like absolutely adorable. You move the Google map to the next door and the house beside it is burnt down and abandoned. And I was like, I know I'm not gonna be comfortable living it. Chunk, get off. Oh my gosh, he just was trying to eat my hair gel. I knew I was going to be comfortable living in East Lake by myself, and I did not want another situation where I felt unsafe. So I scratched East Lake out, and I never went to the East Lake homes with my realtor. I would just sort of drive by them myself and just be like, oh, like that really stings. Like, that's definitely not going to be my house. And I would just move on. So then the very first house that I found, this one, is the one that I told my realtor, I was like, hey, like, I actually want to go see it. She was like, okay, cool. Didn't know anything about this area and we tore it super cute home just got flipped in my budget I was so happy and I just prayed really really hard about it I was like I feel like this could be my house like all this type of stuff now here's the important thing to note when you're getting a house like your realtor is incredibly important your realtor has to know what they're doing almost more importantly you need a good mortgage lender your realtor is going to be the person that negotiates about the house and finds you like your home essentially but your mortgage lender is all financial things and so I had essentially used my entire savings account 
on the first home. So like I truly had nothing. So I told my mortgage lender, I was like, I have like probably a thousand dollars I could put towards this house. Like I have no down payment, but I have to get a home. Like, please help me. He's the same mortgage lender that I've worked with before. Love him. His name is Chuck Bates. If you're in Birmingham, Alabama, use Chuck Bates. He's literally amazing. And my realtor was Sarah Johnson. Okay. So anyway, I, and like, I feel like as a female and just someone that's just 23, it can be really hard to talk about financial situations. Like there's things that we've all messed up when it comes to credit and money. And that can be embarrassing. But like when you're trying to get a house, you have to be honest and sort of vulnerable because they're going to find out they're going to run your credit. They're going to see how much is in your account. You might as well just tell them what your situation is. And so he was like, all right, like we can work with that. Like, let's go. So the good thing was that I found a house within my budget. That was super good. My debt to ratio income is like really good because I don't really have loans. And did I have my car then? Yeah, I think I did have my car, but that was fine. The main thing was just like cash to close. Like I didn't have much of that. So we did earnest money, which was a thousand dollars. So I had earnest money is the money that like you give to the seller before like your close date. It's sort of like, hey, I'm serious about this. Like I want this, blah, blah, blah. I give that appraisal my appraisal was 650 mind you you have to have an appraisal because your appraisal is helpful like your house you could have offered 150 your appraisal could say your house is only worth 130 and then that's when you can renegotiate luckily for me my house literally appraised within like i want to say like a thousand dollars of what i offered do y'all see how much longer this is like what what's going on anyway so that was that was pretty amazing um my inspection i want to say was like 300 um i see a little granddaddy long leg hate spiders um so yeah i sort of lost my train of thought anyway my realtor my mortgage lender were so amazing that i ended up getting cash back at closing only thing I came out of pocket for were like those expenses. Like I just said, I did not have a down payment essentially. So Chuck found me an amazing grant that we used. Um, and Sarah negotiated amazingly because there's like a few things wrong with the house that are like things that needed repairs. And the thing is, is like most of the times when someone's done with the house, especially once it's flipped, they're done. They don't want to keep working. So essentially they'll just give you the money for the repairs that you're asking for you can use the money for repairs for repairs or do whatever you sort of want with it but anyway i ended up getting money back i don't remember how much if i'm being honest that whole time was such a blur i remember it was enough to like help me get something started when i moved in the house it wasn't a lot but just the fact that i was the buyer and was getting money back is insane so that was such a blessing. Like when I say God like carried me through this entire house process, like this house is like a tiny little home. It's perfect for me. I love my neighborhood. I love the area. It got flipped. Sarah was amazing. Chuck was amazing. Like it was amazing. So the thing is, honestly, you don't even have to have that much money saved up. You don't even have to have 3.5%. Obviously that's ideal, but you don't have to have that. You just need to be working with people that like know what they're doing and can help you get what you want. Because at the end of the day, like you getting what you want and you closing on a house is helping them, you know, like pay for their life as well. So they're obviously invested. But I just like Sarah's such a great realtor. Like, oh my gosh, she's just amazing. Chuck is amazing. Like I felt so comfortable around him. I I tried to move as quickly as I could because he was always on it. I felt comfortable like telling him like this is how much money I have. Like I'm trying to work on my credit like blah, blah, blah. He is absolutely amazing. So that's sort of how I got my house. And all the expenses out of pocket were really hard to cover. It was December. I was trying to like throw a class party for my kids. I was trying to get them like Christmas presents. I was trying to do so much stuff. I was trying to do Christmas for everyone else and had all of this going on also i closed on like december like 28th or something like it was around christmas time it was just hectic like it was a really hectic time but anyway they made it happen like if 
when anyone says like, oh my gosh, like I want to buy a house. I'm like, Sarah and Chuck, that's the combo that you want. Sarah and Chuck, because they're just so educated. So yeah, anyway, that was, that was that. That was me moving into the house. Ever since I moved in, like my mental health, my life just improved. Like my house isn't fully decorated. It's something I work on. It's something I like stress over all the time because I'm like, <laughs> I want my house to be done. But just the peace that I have being in a safe place on my own is just amazing. I mean, financially, sometimes with the teacher salary, living on your own can be very stressful because it's like I've had a lot of things, not a lot, but a few things happen to the house since I've moved in. Just like maintenance type things that are just very expensive to afford by yourself. And it's something that you just don't think of when you're young. You don't think of when you have an apartment. You just call your landlord. They come out. They fix your AC. Normally, that would be like $5,000. Just crazy. So luckily, a lot of things in here are somewhat new. Like I had a new roof. when I These twists, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what's going on. I think I need to make them a little bit bigger. But when I moved in, like I, there's a new roof. The water heater was like 2021. So things are like fairly new. But I truly love it. I've been at peace. So if you ever have questions, y'all can definitely message me. Because with it being my second house, y'all, I know so much. And it was such a stressful process with like both homes. And luckily, like with this one, I want to say like there weren't there was like one other offer I want to say, or maybe I was the only offered. It was just something to where God lined it up just to be like literally perfect. Like I was so grateful. Like I remember the video I sent Clev and Becca and Mimi. I was like, it's just so cute. It's just so cute. Like that's why I kept saying in the video. I was like, it's just so cute. Like it's so perfect. Anyway, I'm just I'm really really grateful because that was a really stressful time of my life and just the way it was orchestrated was just so it was so perfect I'm so grateful and I know that like I'm gonna finish decorating it get the like yard the way I want it like flowers like my bedroom just like I'm gonna get it all together and it's gonna look so good at the end and honestly I think it's a property that I could probably make like a little bit of money off of for sure like once I get it, like, decorated and get good pictures and stuff, like, I think I could make some money off of it. And then, like, to get stuff, sometimes, not sometimes, before a lot of the stuff, I've just been, um, estate sailing it. Like, that huge mirror that, I, also, if y'all hear that whistling noise in the background, my water, I just realized it got louder. My, like, water lines or faucets are making a noise. So, we had a plumber come out, and apparently it's not dangerous, but... And it's not just my water heater. He didn't really know what it was. So I'm probably going to have someone come back out and look at it. But Clev and I heard it when we came back after a storm. It was like this really loud whistling noise. And we thought it was only the water heater. But then we realized it was from under the faucets too. So we have no clue what it is. So hopefully it's not expensive and hopefully it's really simple. But that's what I was telling Clev, like, wow, that would be nice if we could just call a landlord right now. But nope, we were calling a plumber to come out, which is expensive. But yeah, anyway, I'm going to keep twisting my hair. Maybe show y'all midway through. I am going to pull them, though, so that they, like, are longer. I hope I don't look like a bug, because right now it's definitely giving bug. For sure. But anyway, I shall keep y'all updated. Okay, so definitely not cute like I thought. Also, I've been watching Bridesmaids and got very distracted. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm going to do a few little styles. I'm also thinking as they dry, they're going to drop, you know. But my goal with this was to have a protective hairstyle. Now I have a protective hairstyle. Will I be taking any pictures until I get my hair braided? No. Will I be feeling cute? Probably not. But the reality is I need my hair to be protected up and that's what it is. Also, it could have been cuter if I added in like hair. But whenever I do that, it takes me so long and I just didn't have the energy. So I'm hoping that once they dry and they get full and stuff, it'll be 
it'll be a look it'll be cute but yeah i'm gonna go to the indian grocery store at some point like i said probably one of my last videos and get the stuff for my hair oil keep it oiled and realistically i'm probably going to just take a few down in the front maybe something like this and probably wear it in a little bun little pony all the time because i'm really only doing this because i want my hair to grow you get what i'm saying so just a little bun and there we go that's honestly a lot better but realistically i'm probably gonna put these two up too because i hate when stuff is in my purse so that's that tip it hooray um i'm probably gonna straighten up a little bit in here vacuum probably straighten up my room because i need to put some clothes up and then i'm gonna see what becca is doing so yeah thanks for watching